All right, welcome to another episode of Fun Never Ends with Nelson and Friends. Uh, it is Wednesday, September 6th. Weather's cooling down here, going live from my house in West Covina, California. No on location today, but uh, it's going to be a really good show for you. I've got my friend Desiree Bassett, who is a killer guitar player. She's played with Ted Nugent. She's played with Marshall Tucker Band. She's played with Sammy Hagar. I can't even say it. I'm going to see the guy Sunday. So, um, so far, that's all I can think of unless uh, you know somebody I'm missing, Desiree. Oh, <laughs> I think you got it pretty good there. All right. So, Desiree Bastion, live from, via Skype from Sydney, Australia. How you doing, Desiree? Great to talk I'm to doing you. So, how have the show's been? I know you guys started what on Friday, correct? Something like that. Yeah, we've had I think about four shows so far. Yeah. And how's every show been? Like, give me the details on how like sound check and everything, hanging out with kind of some of the new members. It's been pretty cool. Um, it's definitely been, like, a little bit of a challenge at start, only because, like, we've really only had one rehearsal, and it was really, like, for, like, us as a band collectively, for the most part, it's been our first time playing together, really. We never met or anything beforehand, but uh, we had one rehearsal, and then we, the next day we jumped right into our first show, and... It, it starts getting tighter and tighter each show, but, like, the first one felt more like a dress rehearsal, and it's, and it's like, <laughs> we had to um, we had to do some load-in, set up our equipment, and we do the show, or we do sound check, and, and then we do the show, and then we also had to do, like, kind of our own loadout and, like, break yeah. down our stuff, which is fun. I, I like that part. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's um, cool. Yeah, it's been going pretty good so far. That's good. Uh, so when you went over there, I've seen, uh, well, let's, I didn't even say what the show was that she's doing. She's doing the Michael Jackson Legacy Tour. And then I forget to mention, she you've done the Immortal, or the Cirque Soleil Immortal World Tour, correct? That's correct. And there's a World Domination Tour. I forget the name of that one. Oh, I... <laughs> I'm trying to get all the points right here. <laughs> <laughs> so I've seen your rig at what did you aside from your pedal board and the was it the Ernie Ball that you took with you yeah the Ernie Ball Music Man the John Petrucci 6 I think it was yeah those are your only two for now huh for now yes I would have thought you took like yeah, at least what three guitars with you. I don't know. I just <laughs> if, that, if that were easy for this one, I would have already. But I was trying to save money for like uh, the mono brand cases where you can bring like two guitars at once, oh, like, yeah. like in one piece. But I mean, at the time, easy. like I couldn't save up for one, so I was just like in a rush to get everything done, everything packed before I had to leave. <laughs> next, next time I will though. I'm planning on it. That's good. That's good. So, you've done... I could, I'm could. i trying to see if I... Correct me if I'm wrong. You have three albums that you've recorded previously. Is that correct? That's correct. So... <coughs> excuse me. First one was a self-titled tracked album. And then you yes, got uh, a... Power and Force Volume 1 and 2. Yes. So Power and Force is really like the original one, though we're not making any more copies. That's a limited edition. Mm -hmm. And then Power and Force 2 is basically like a whole kind of like remaster of the CD and uh, just kind of like we're putting that one out there. Yeah. Yeah, I've listened to, I've listened to all three of them. They sound amazing, kick ass, you know. Uh, all badass tracks from there. Thank you. Yeah, really good on songwriting and then doing all the instrumental parts. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Thank you. 
Are you working on anything coming up at all? Uh, I am. Uh, aside from this tour, I've been writing a lot of music lately. Um, I'm trying to get composed my uh, third album. It's getting there. It's a process. I've been doing a lot of the recording at home, and yeah. then I just got to get uh, a couple other tracks done, and then I have to find kind of like I'd like to try to find the right person to do like the mixing and mastering of it, and then get some uh, physical copies made. And I need the artwork done still. It's, it's still a long process, but. I can't wait to hear it when it's, it's done. Just... Oh, I'm, I'm excited to get it done. I've been needing to get it done for so long now. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, how long did it take you to get these albums done? Um, well, the first one, it didn't take very long because I've, I've had the list of songs I've been wanting to do for a long time since a lot of those songs I've written since I was 10, 12 years old. So I've kind of had that going. It was kind of an easy process to go through, but uh, it just took a lot of finance. And then the second one, like I said, it's just more so like a remix of it. The last album, I think, probably took like, I want to say like a good year maybe to oh, wow. work on. Cool. Uh, tell me about your experiences with playing with the Motor City Madman, the Red Rocker, and Marshall Tucker Band. I mean, the first oh. time I really saw anything about like that really caught my attention about you was when you were playing, <coughs> excuse me, Rock and Roll by Led Zeppelin, playing lead guitar with Sammy and Vic. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was a fun show. Actually, it's funny, like, what, I was 15 when it happened. We were, um, I'm good friends with uh, Kevin Dugan, who does the uh, the technician uh, end of it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm Stewie. And uh, we went out, my dad and I and my mom, uh, just to go and watch him play in concert. He was playing at the uh, Foxwoods Casino. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we went there, and I brought my guitar. We had backstage passes. I just wanted the band to sign my guitar and uh, watch the show from backstage. And they had just finished with a, uh, a sound check, and the band walked off to the dressing room. Sammy just gets in, and, and Kevin was talking to him. And it's like, that girl over there, like, uh, asking, it's like, oh, she can play guitar. So he comes over to me, and we start talking, and he asks me, Oh, well, how many of my songs do you know? And I felt so embarrassed because like, I, <laughs> I didn't really know any of the Van Halen and Sammy Hagar songs or anything. So I was like, okay, well, come over here. So we look at the uh, the set list that was on the drum riser. It's like, do you know Rock and Roll by the Let's Zeppelin? I was like, yeah, I know that one. And then uh, he brought the band back out for a sound check. And I, I thought it was just going to be like, okay, well, it's a jam out and like a sound check, and it'd be awesome. People, yeah. like, I, I had no idea it was like some sort of thing to just kind of like, I don't know, like, if you want to call it like audition or something. But we played through the sound check. And the next thing I know after we finished playing the song, he's like, you stand over there and wait for me to call your name. I was like, wait a minute, is this really happening right now? <laughs> Like, That's a dream come true uh, right there. I, I couldn't even believe it. I, I don't even have the words still to this day to describe what happened, really. <laughs> oh, my God. And that, I remember the way you introduced it. There's a girl that lives around these woods named Desiree Bassett. I think she's about as tall as my daughter, Kari. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty awesome. And how about playing with Uncle Ted? Uncle Ted. Oh, that's a good one. Um, listen, I'm trying to remember exactly how it started, but my dad, I guess he talked to the manager and stuff and was able to arrange something, but we had backstages to go and uh, see him play in, um, I think it was Lupo's Heartbreak in Rhode Island. And um, we went go to, uh, backstage and meet the uh, guitar tech and... Um, we went on his bus and got to meet him and talk to him for a bit. And then the next thing I know is, like, I got to play on Johnny Be Good with him for one show. And then it just was, like, almost like a regular since he was in the area. So it was like, okay, can I sit in? And we start playing. And I'm like, holy crap. Oh, that's pretty wild. <laughs> that's a cool experience right there. <laughs> 
I seen I got only got to see Ted once, and he's amazing. Oh, he's awesome. He's awesome. Yeah, one badass guitar player, that's for sure. Um, tell me about your Marshall Tucker gig experience. Uh, that was kind of another one that somewhat happened by accident. It was like I was fifteen, and they were. They were playing on like the, the Romantic Green. Um, it was like um, they were doing like a fundraiser concert. Uh, it was Marshall Tucker, Rick Danger, and uh, the Shabu All Stars. And I was supposed to be uh, sit- I was supposed to be sitting in with the Shabu All Stars that night. And my and uh, we were hanging backstage and stuff. I had my stuff ready. And uh, my dad talked to uh, to Doug, the uh, the lead singer, mm-hmm. and. Uh, he was very intrigued, and I got to meet him, get pictures with him in the band and stuff. Next thing I know, like, after they played a couple of songs, a few songs, and uh, they called me up to, to jam on their songs. But I, I only heard, like, one song by them, but I didn't know any other music. I was like, oh, God, what am I going to do? So it was like the uh, the guitar player, Chris Hicks, was showing me, oh, it's just these ones, and just follow along. And I'm like, okay. And then the next thing I know, after that one song's done, I end up playing for, like, the rest of their set. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's so awesome. And then they had Rick Derringer up for one of the oh songs. I can't God. remember which one, but... It was, was it, so, like, it Coochie was so Coochie far. Man or something? Uh, it was, like, it was one of the Marshall Tucker songs. Oh, okay. I really can't remember which one it was, gotcha. but it was such a trip, though. They're actually... Coming around uh, either later this year or early next year. I might go catch him. Oh, you should, definitely. So, for that show, I know people can't see this, but I am wearing a Desiree Bassett shirt. I will be wearing that to the Marshall Tucker show as well as (laughs) this Sunday to Sammy Hagar. Nice. So, I forget... I'm somewhere in orchestra, so hopefully somebody picks up on this. <laughs> so awesome. So. <coughs> Excuse me. Aside from um, doing your music doing your and music. going on tour and stuff like that, what do you like to do on your downtime? On my downtime? Well, I'm really into video games and... I, I mean, before when I was living with my dad, I had the space to do it. Now I don't, but I really love dirt biking and I love fishing and driving ATVs and just like all outdoorsy stuff. But yeah, I play a lot of League of Legends in my spare time when I can. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Do you have any other games that you play that you feel that maybe other people should know more about or get into if they haven't? Uh, I'm not really sure. I know a lot of people are into Battlegrounds right now by Player Unknown, yeah. which that's a really popular one. I I don't have it on my computer since I I run a Mac, but yeah. Uh, at some point maybe eventually if, if people are already tired of the game or whatever, then I'll get into <laughs> it. But um, I play a lot of Xbox games too. Like I'm into like the Gears of War series video, uh, video games. I just no, finished I playing so. Witcher School, and I finished playing uh, Alan Wake. I love those games. They're awesome. That's pretty cool. Good stuff for sure. And you know, I know you love. Oh man, you're gonna kill me for not remembering your one of your favorite bands. Oh, I for. I know it's on the back of your MacBook too. Oh, Kill Switch, <laughs> Kill Switch. There it is. Kill Switch. My all-time favorite. Um, Kill Switch Engage being one of your favorite bands, and you got to see them this year. Yeah, they played at the uh, the Worcester Theater. I think it was like two, three months ago or something. Yeah. I think. And how was that show? Oh, it was awesome. Their shows never disappoint. Like, I the first time I saw them, I didn't know who they were. It was like when I was young. I was like 12, 13 mm-hmm. when I saw them, and they were playing at Ozfest in Hartford. And yeah. they had Howard yeah. at the time, and I was like, "Oh man, this band is so killer! I'm gonna look them up later." And I was in love with their music. I've just followed them ever since. And it's like, "Oh, Jesse Leach was the original singer. This stuff is so dope." But 
the rest of the Kill Switch concerts, I've probably been through maybe four or five Kill Switch concerts by now. Oh, but it's just like every time it's just like, like they never disappoint. Like I know all their songs from like top to bottom. <laughs> and the last time I went, like uh, I went with my boyfriend's brother, uh, his older brother. Mm-hmm. And we were like up at the front and like kind of like sort of where they had like uh, low stuff up on the stage and everything. Yeah. And I was just like up in, I remember I was up front, like, and Jesse was like standing right there. I'm like in tears, crying and like singing the songs because of how much it's just like, it's just stuck to me, all their songs. Just listening to them like almost every single day, like in my car drives, everything. And uh, I guess somebody in, in the area, like the guitar tech or somebody, like noticed it. So yeah. they came over and handed one of the guitar techs to me, and I was just in tears, just crying. <laughs> how amazing it was. That is so awesome. Hey, at least she had a good time, for sure. Yeah, it's one I will never forget. <laughs> I own, like, three quarter t-shirts. I got stickers. I got, like, I got pretty much all their albums, like, everything, basically. For somebody who's just, who doesn't know Killswitch Engage or barely get, getting into them, what album would you recommend as, like, from your personal favorite? Oh, my personal favorite. Um, it depends, because, like, I love a lot of what Howard does, but I'm also, like, oh, Jesse's the original, and it's, like, that's, he's the guy that makes Kill Switch, but hmm. if, on a Howard's perspective, like, I love the As I Lay Dying album, and then there's, um, I love the new album that came out recently, too, um, uh, what the hell is it called? <laughs> it's on the tip of my tongue, like, I, <laughs> now I gotta look it up. Uh, I think I'm gonna look it up too. Let's see. Here we go. Yeah, Incarnate. The Incarnate album. Yeah, Incarnate album. Definitely, I'll definitely check that out for sure. Because. I haven't really dug into Kill Switch that much. I know they do a cover of Holy Diver and stuff like that, but mm-hmm. never really dug into like their original stuff. So yeah, awesome. Uh, the other one, I they're they're not incarnate, but the one before that, uh, Disarm the Descent, is another really good album too. Also has Jesse Leach on it. I'll definitely check it out. I think I had a buddy in when I was going to college and we were taking a music performance class and somebody covered Kill Switch. It sounded really good. I forget the song, though. <laughs> they have a lot of really good songs. Yeah. Any plans on your day off today? What's that? Any plans for your day off today? Uh, I was planning to go to the mall today if I can and try to hit the city. Um, I was running out of makeup products, so I had to get some more makeup. But I'd like to try to go out and explore the city a little bit more. I actually just spent my third time, I think, to Sydney, but mm-hmm. it, it's it's nice weather out. Like I know that they're just passing through. I think it was the winter time going into spring or something like that, oh, or wow. maybe into some. I'm not sure, but I forgot about the difference within the seasons. Yeah, it's been it's been nice so far. It has uh, they hardly have rain here, but it's been pretty windy the past days. Hey, it's, it has, it how's the temperature? Pretty, pretty okay? Or yeah, the temperature's been pretty good. It hasn't been super cold. It's been like almost like the tail end of winter of like it being like just getting into warm and it's like yeah. if you stand out in the sun and it's not really windy it's nice it's it's like very breezy kind of reminds me of the LA weather a little bit <laughs> <laughs> but of course it's a lot more beautiful than in LA is that's for sure mm-hmm. so okay Oh, when it comes down to movies, 
for you, what are your preferences on movies? Oh, movies. Um, I used to be really into horror movies. I mm. haven't watched a lot of them lately. Um, I'm into like action adventure stuff. Um, let's see, what was the last movie I just watched? I just recently watched on the plane. Uh, Fate of the Furious Eight. I actually like. I enjoy those series of movies. They're they're very entertaining. But <laughs> um, I was very big into the Resident Evil movies for a while. Um, what else? Um, and <laughs> I feel so guilty, but I cried during like Disney movies. <laughs> Hey, Disney like, movies are good. I mean, it does have that point where it gets you in the waterworks. Oh, it hits me in the feels every time. Like, I go watch uh, Lion King and Bambi all over again, and I'll still cry. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to lie I on that one. Tell you how many times. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite Disney movie? Like a Disney. top five? <laughs> oh, that's a hard one. Uh, Lion King's definitely up there. Bambi's up there. Uh, Toy Story's amazing. Um, let's see, two more. Uh, oh god, this is so hard. There's so many that I love. Uh, There's a lot. Um, There's a lot of good ones out there. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Um, what's a like? A Bug's Life was pretty cool. But it's like, it's a good one. That's, wait, that's a movie, that's right? a Pixar movie. Oh, that's a Pixar movie. Okay, uh, um, same thing almost. It almost Disney, feels like the same Pixar, thing. Pixar, it's still the same. Yeah, it counts. And then uh, let's see, one more. Um, I I really liked Pocahontas. I like that go. movie a lot. That's a good one. Now, how do you feel about like? Was it Lion King after like? Lion King 2, they did like, certain Disney movies kind of come off doing like these little independent movies. How do you, have you seen any of those? And oh, what are I've, your thoughts I've, on those? I've seen the second one and I saw they had this other one, the Lion King one and a half. Oh, yeah, that's, and the, that's like Timon and Pumbaa. Yeah, I I liked it. It was it was comical and like it, it's like a fun like cute movie. But like when it comes to like the original Lion King, oh, it's just like so serious. Like in the feels. The second one, I didn't feel that as much. I feel like they were trying to do too much of a repeat, and it was like it it was still like genuinely a good movie. But I just felt like it, it wasn't hitting as hard as the first one. Definitely. Yeah. Were you big on Aladdin? Oh, I love Aladdin. One of my favorite movies. You can't, you know, you can't. Nothing beats Robin Williams as Genie. Oh, I love Robin Williams. Oh my god! Such a terrible loss for sure. But he had a great career. Mhm. Do you have any favorite Robin Williams movies? I love the Peter Pan movie. <laughs> Got a <to> love hook. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, it's a good movie. That and Mrs. Doubtfire. Mhm. Mm there was it, it, speaking of movies. There was another movie I really liked, and it, I don't think it was a Disney movie. I think it, I can't remember uh, who did the movie, but it was um, uh, the Brave Little Toaster. Brave Little Toaster. Yeah, I, I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> So awesome. So we've got somebody on the chat board right now. It's uh, your friend. Uh, 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 I'm sorry if, you, if I get your first name wrong. It's uh, it doesn't look like Troy, but it's a uh, it's T O R Y. <coughs> Dent McDonald. Oh, Tori. 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 Tori asks, "How's the tour going?" Going good. Oh. That's probably like the first person that actually went through the the chat through Spreaker. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> Somebody utilized it. And 
Uh, Tori says hi. <laughs> oh. oh, we're Sh and it says loving the pics that you're sharing. <laughs> I got time. <laughs> I got time. So, okay. Uh, what more? Where were we? We were talking about movies. And you said you were. You used to be big into horror movies. We went off to Disney. Uh, do you have any favorite like action movies and stuff like that? My favorite action comedy. movie. Me too. Oh, comedy. Both. Um, oh, both. Um, oh gosh. Um, I can't really think of any at the top of my head, honestly. Like, there's, I've, I've been watching so many movies, but I just, I can't really like think of one right now. Gotcha. Gotcha. I I love the um the Star Wars movies, but I oh man, you can't like, go wrong. The, with the, new, the new ones like they're good, like they're entertaining, but like it, I think um, which which one was the last one? I can't remember. Last uh, one was, was it Rogue? Mm, unless you're Rogue, I hadn't seen Rogue. That was one of the last more of like an independent kind of film that they were doing but <clears throat> the last the one before that was with uh, Kylo Ren yeah I that forget the was, name of it. The, it it hit me hard with like yeah. I, I don't want to get spoilers if anybody hasn't seen it but there's Force Awakens, a couple of seasons yeah that was the Force Awakens and then the Rogue One I think it was the last one that came out like I honestly like for somebody that's watched all the other Star Wars movies, I wasn't really, like... It was okay, but it wasn't something that was, like... There was just a lot of things that I had a problem with in it. Yeah. And I'm not going to say spoilers to, you know, people that haven't seen it yet, but I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the Star Wars movies. Yeah, that's for sure. The, there's one more coming out in December. Uh, the Last Jedi. Yeah... I'm I'm pretty excited to see it. Um, which reminds me, because I saw uh, what was it like last week or two weeks ago that they were coming out with uh, there was a trailer for like a Darth Vader movie, and I was like, oh, this was seen like a really cool concept, but like the amount of CGI that was used yeah. like in the trailer, I was like mildly disappointed about. It. I was like, oh shit, it's basically <laughs> like um, a, a Darth Vader story, basically. They're doing the same thing with Obi Wan. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. There's supposed to be an Obi-Wan in the story also. Uh, I didn't know that. No. Uh, Brian Thunderfoot Porter says, Hi, Diz. Hi. How's it going with Thunderfoot? Oh, man. Um, oh, yeah. It's, I was just posting this article today. Star, the new Star Wars episode, uh, director Colin Trevorrow steps uh, down. I guess he's not going to be doing the final film or something. I think I saw something about that. I think I had seen your post about that, but I didn't get to click on it. Yeah, this seems like there's a lot of changes going on with the Star Wars movies stuff ever since Disney bought it out. Yeah, I mean, everything prior to that, it was... It was better. I don't know how they're they're going to be running story after story. Like I was telling my friend, I wouldn't be surprised if they did like a Wedge and Tilly's story. <laughs> <laughs> so who knows? Yeah, I don't know at this point. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to play a quick track off. Uh, your self-titled album calling Flying Flying Sky High. Uh, a little story, you want to give a little story about that song before I go ahead and play it? 
Uh, I mean, <laughs> it's basically a song just kind of like what I've been going through in like uh, my high school years, really. I wrote that song when I was 15, and it's just kind of stuff about what's going on at home and in school, really. Gotcha. All right, I'm going to play a little bit of this, and we will go ahead. We will go ahead and uh, get back to the interview. We'll be right back. You just heard Fly Sky High. I'm just I just played a little tidbit off of that. So if you want it, you can go on to Amazon Music. You can pick up the digital copy, or, or I mean, they can also buy it from you, correct? Yes, you can also go on iTunes to pick it up, and uh, like you said, Amazon. It's also on Rhapsody and CD Baby. There you go. If you don't have, if you like what you hear, and you want to get a copy, go ahead, buy the album, support the local artists. It's still local if you're in the United States, <laughs> even if you're worldwide. <laughs> Musicians, help a musician out. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, um, you did. I got to see you twice this year, uh, one being in Vegas. That was a fun time, aside from stuff we're not going to get into. Um, and I got to see you a few months ago, <laughs> recently, when you came out for uh, one of your friend's weddings. Yeah, that was fun. That was pretty cool. It was great to hang out with you again, that's for sure. For sure. I'll have to come out and make a trip out to L.A. or something again at some point soon. Make it like a week vacation or something. Something like that. Are you planning on doing the NAMM show again? What's that? Are you planning on doing the NAMM show again Any uh, this upcoming year? Uh, I'm planning on it, yeah. Like, I honestly don't know what the schedule entails in terms of this tour. I know... The rumor has it that there may be shows in December, uh, mm -hmm. but I'll be home like during like uh, Christmas and New Year's and stuff. But um, hopefully by January, like it'll be pretty open and I can put some money away to uh, to get a flight and hotel and all that because I'd like to go out again this yeah. coming year. Yeah. In the a last while. time you were out here was what 2015? I think so. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I, yeah that's right. That's been the, a couple that of years. was the same year I met you. <laughs> Funny enough. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. This lingering cough is not going away. Oh, believe me, I've been stuck with this like lingering cough for like the past two and a half months now. Like a oh. couple months ago, like my boyfriend had like a cold, and then. I don't know, I caught it, and then... Ah, like, uh, you caught Kevin's cold. 
<laughs> he had it for like a week, and then mine started going away for a week. But then it's oh, just like no. I, I still got stuck with that major cough. Now it's like finally it's starting to like break up. Like I get it every once in a while, but it's like it's finally at the point of like okay, I think it's like finally better now. <laughs> awesome. Your your setup. How does your setup run? I know you use a Marshall JCM. Am I correct? It's a Marshall JVM 410H. Okay, I was I was off by one letter. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, pedal uh, pedal wise, what do you? What is your setup run? Uh, so from left to right, I got an ISP noise decimator. I oh, have an OCD pedal, um, a Boss Super Chorus, um, a Digitech Drop Tune, an Ibanez Tube Screamer. Um, what else? I have a Proton pedal. It's a Mark Colicombe edition of like a delay pedal. Mm -hmm. I have just the standard tuner, and then I have a Zach Wild Wall, and then just how whatever. Is that, how is that Zach Wild Wall? I love it. I've, I've actually had it for a long time. I've had it for, like, 10 years now, maybe, but, like, it, I still love that title. I tell you, check that one out, along with that drop tune pedal. That one sounds pretty good, too. <laughs> the drop tune, like, I can't even tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an effort it saves me. Like, I've had a couple of both words, like, because like, I get so sick of like tuning down my guitar manually yeah. and stuff. It takes time, and eventually it just like stretch out and it breaks over time. Yeah. So it's just I've had a couple of drop tune pedals. Like I had one of them that I had was like it was called a Mark it was like a big thing. But like it wasn't really as accurate. And, it was doing weird things sometimes where it would just shut off and stuff. It's not good. But mm -hmm. then I got this one where it's just like the tracking on it is so fast and it's just like it sounds so accurate. And I was just so happy with it. That's good. And definitely, definitely one to check out for sure. So do you, what's, do you have any, uh, well, I'm not going to, uh, you don't have to give it away, but what, <coughs> excuse me. That damn cough again. <laughs> so weird. I know how you feel. <laughs> I try to talk. It's like I'm smoking over here. I'm not smoking. I was going to say, the drop tune pedal, what, like, you use it for quite amount of songs. Which ones do you mainly, like, use it for, like, while you're out on the road, especially for this show? Uh, uh, for this particular show, uh, some of those are not in the same key. So, like, there's songs like, uh, let's see, what do I use it for? I use it for uh, Human Nature, and then I use it for uh, Black and White, Billie Jean. Uh, Beat It, we do in drop C tuning, which is pretty fun. Drop I like that. Drop C tuning? Wow. Yes. That's wild. I love it. It's, just, it, it's so, like, strong. That I gotta hear, especially in drop C. I'm, not, <laughs> I'm so used to listening to what is it? The recordings in standard or something? It's an E flat. It's an E flat. Yeah, this, it, uh, the original recordings in E flat. Oh, okay. Wow, drop C. <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie. It's like my favorite number to do just because we're doing drop C. I'm like, yes, it feels like a rush. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's like going to. It's like playing a death metal track in drop C. I love it. It's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, let's see now. Talk about the other guitars that you own aside from. I've known everybody's seen your photos. You got that wild gold SG. It feels amazing. <laughs> that thing is cool. I love that guitar. Like, honestly, like, it's so hard to find anything else like it. As much as it's just, like, an SG, it's, like, originally, like, it was only supposed to, like, I, I wasn't supposed to buy the thing. It was just supposed to be a store display at Sam Ash in New York. And, uh, 
my dad just at the time was like kind of like oh like I don't know what he said but like he really convinced him okay like I'll sell it to you for like 1500 I was like I, I had to have this thing because like the SG was like I played so many of them and a lot of them that I played are either very top heavy like mm-hmm. the neck comes down or it's just like the neck is like super thick for my hand and after playing like 15-20 minutes like my hand starts to cramp off but yeah. And then sometimes yeah. with the tones are like we got the little big speed thing. It's like it makes it difficult, but just something about that one, the way that it's like it's so balanced. The tones are like so similar to like as if you're playing like the Les Paul. It's just like super light and just like it just fits. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> hey, you got the you got a really good collection of guitars. That's for sure. <laughs> I try. <laughs> I spent a lot of time looking for those right ones. But then again, the search never ends. <laughs> There's still a lot of guitars out yeah. there too, so you can never have enough. Now I'm in the process of like trying to figure out what I want for like a custom guitar because I actually um. I'm going to try to put some money away from it, but there's a guy in Connecticut, uh, his name is Mike Sherman. He just built a uh, a custom bass guitar for my boyfriend, and I'm, I'm super jealous of it, personally, because, like, it's just built so, like, perfectly. Per- like, it fits me really well, the way that it feels, the neck, and, like, the body shape, everything. And it's like, oh, man, like, it's just, like, really convincing. But this guy, like, I checked out his work a little bit, and uh, yeah. he does yeah. really amazing pieces. Um and he's good friends with my bass player back home, uh, Bob Laramie. And, yeah. uh, but uh, he was supposed to move down to Florida, but I guess he just recently opened up a factory back in Connecticut. So he's getting that going. And uh, so I'm excited to try to work something out and get a cover built, hopefully. And I've been actually, I've been playing bass for the past couple months, few months, trying to learn how to play some bass now. I've been getting yeah, into that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You guys follow her on her Instagram or her Facebook. She's got these badass videos of her playing bass. It's <laughs> it's awesome. I'm I'm still learning. I'm I'm not anywhere in my first level, but I'm getting there. I'm learning. Yeah, but it sounds good I'm, for sure. I like to. Uh, it. I started out. Um, like trying like to fidget a little bit with it, but like I've been borrowing my boyfriend's five string bass and. It, it's fun to play on five, but I think it would probably be easier if I just uh, scale down to four string for right now until I can just feel like, okay, yeah, I'm going to move back to five and learn some other stuff. <laughs> there you go. Brian asks, is the scarf still attached to the SG? No, it, it's not. Um, I mean, every once in a while I, I put it on and take it off and stuff, but I still have the scarf. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So, back home... Uh, you have what? You have a few projects. You do a a Desiree Bassett and Time Machine, and you also do kind of a duo kind of uh, acoustic show, correct? That's correct. And then I think you might have another side project with Kevin, but I forget the name or if there's a name involved. Um, he's part of just like the the Desert Bassett self title thing. Yeah. So currently with that one, we're just kind of in the process of trying to find a drummer so we can do some more gigs and stuff. And Time Machine, like, I try to get shows when I can, but it's hard because I know my drummer he's in like three, four other bands too, so he's in all different projects. And sometimes he flies off to to Michigan to do some uh, clinics and stuff like that too. He's always a busy guy, but. Oh, shit. Crazy. Yeah, and then the uh, the acoustic duo thing happens like I think once or twice every month or two or something. But those are fun little gigs. That's pretty cool. It would be nice to see you guys come out here play this way. And... Oh really yeah, I like... love to get some things that way. Especially like even like during them on one of the stages, that'd be pretty cool to see too. That would be dope. <laughs> I don't know who to talk to you about those, but I would love to get one. That would be sick. I'm pretty sure there's a contact over at the website somewhere that you can... Who knows? <laughs> Just get, find some backline. <laughs> I'm, 
Unless Doug Wimbish is doing the Wimbashing again out that way, then maybe I can ask him and try to sneak the band in there or something. There you go. <laughs> It'll be great <laughs> to see you and Callie. Hey, yeah, rocking out. That'd be fun. So, um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and play one more track. This is off. This is off of Power and Force, and it's self. It's titled Power and Force. Do you have anything you'd like to? add to that before I hit the play button? Uh, with Power and Force, honestly, that was pretty much the very first song I wrote. I was 10 years old, and uh, I was sitting down with one of those foster little 8-track recorders just messing around with it, and it just became what it was. Alright, so we're going to take a quick break and let you listen to this for a little bit and we'll come back and continue the interview we'll be right back Back and that's some kick-ass shredding right there. <laughs> <laughs> so, how old were you when you started taking guitar lessons? Uh, when I started playing, I was three years old, and it was mostly because uh, I was sitting around in the living room watching my dad play, and uh, he would put his guitar down. Uh, on the stand after he finishes, and I would go over and start touching it, like, playing with the strings a little bit, blocking it, and, like, touching the fretboard. He's like, don't touch it! Like, because that's, like, his prized possession. Like, that was the first guitar he ever bought. He bought it out of a, a pawn shop in Okinawa when he was stationed over there. Oh, wow. When he was still on screens. And he was, uh, he learned all of his music through just reading, like, the Guitar World and Guitar Player magazines and stuff. And, uh, buying all the books for it. And uh, so anyways, after a little bit, I kept going back and touching it after he tells me not to. And he's like, okay, like, I think I need to do something about it. So he, he bought me, like, this kid-sized one. It was like a Lotus guitar, kind of like a knockoff of, like, the, uh, the Squires and Fender guitars and stuff. It was like a little black and white one. And um, from there, he wrote, like, F, G, and A. And he thought, oh, okay, maybe if I try to show her how to play, like, teach her something and see what happens. So... He was showing me like single notes and then eventually it got to like learning how to play some chords and stuff and I just kind of like was practicing like eight hours a day just like on my own time just playing on it like not to stop and all. Uh, it got to a point like when I was five my dad bought me a full size one and I'm just learning songs just by listening to them, putting the CDs in, just playing them, putting them in reverse, <laughs> learning part by part and my parents sometimes got annoyed by it but like... <laughs> just so worth it to me. I was learning like Reba McIntyre, Boston, Triumph, and uh, then eventually it got to like, okay, I need to learn something with a little like more challenge. I was like, what is this CD? And it was a Joe Satriani CD, the oh, Surfing with the no. Alien album. That's so awesome. I popped up and I know uh, listened to the whole CD down and I was listening to it. Like, I had songs on repeat. I was like, wow, oh my god, this is amazing. Like, I want to try learning it. And there was a song my dad tried to learn for so long, for so many years. It was the, um, which song was it? Um, always With Me, Always With You. And so I put that in, and I'm like, I'm going to try to learn it and see what happens. And then eventually, like a whole eight hours later, after trying to learn it piece by piece, my dad gets home from work, and my mom's like, you got to come in the living room and watch this. She's like, right now, I'm just going to come from work. 
So it's like, shit, how busy she is. And so, like, I play the track and I'm playing with the CD and stuff. My dad watches me play and he starts crying about it because he's like, you know how long it's been taking me to look at this song and let's play. It was just something I can't forget. <laughs> that is awesome. You picked it up with it, that A outer period. <laughs> It was a fun moment, and it's like, I think at that point, like, my dad started realizing, well, probably, like, a few years later, like, he started taking me to some, like, uh, um, private lessons and stuff I had every once in a while in uh, Yukon and a couple other people, but eventually it got to a point, like, well, maybe she doesn't really need it because, like, she's learning the stuff too fast, and it's like the teachers keep running out of things to t to show her. And it's like, yeah. So we tried some other college level lessons, and I just like kind of blew through some of that, and like I just started learning a lot of the stuff on my own. My dad would try teaching stuff, but like I would go back and just like try to like figure it out for my own like okay you can show me this bit but I need to learn the rest of it because I can't learn something when it's not like fully like put in front of me You're like I gotta yeah. figure it out <laughs> and he was taking me to like um talent shows and stuff like that and it was it was fun but at the same time like being like eight I was like so intimidated it's like where are all these people looking at me <laughs> Like, let me put on like a blindfold. I'll feel better. <laughs> just put the blindfold. No worries. Turn out but the it was, lights. It was just like I don't know. It was so much pressure. Like it was one thing I was playing for family and stuff, and playing yeah. at the birthday parties and like the Fourth of July gatherings. But to play like the talent show at Woodstock Fair and have to be pressured. Okay, you got to play the Steve Vai's like Top Gun anthem in front of like all these people. I'm like. Do I have to do it? <laughs> it was so scary for me at the time. Hey, but you got through it, and it got you to where you are now. You still badass <laughs> guitar player. <laughs> On average, how uh, how often, like during your downtime, how often do you practice? Honestly, uh, not enough, but I've been, like, before the tour, well, before the tour, like, for, like, several months now, I've just been, like, playing, like, learning all different songs, just kind of for fun, even doing, like, learning the vocal lines or lead lines of, like, even, like, Ariana Grande and stuff like that, but <laughs> just, like, I've been writing a lot of music, so I guess that, that qualifies, that counts, and I've been spending a lot of time on Logic, probably, like, seven, eight hours just writing music or learning different songs and stuff on and off. Talk about... You had a... You did a cover of... It was like kind of an EDM track that... Uh, it's a uh, Temanite. There you go. I was going to get the name wrong. <laughs> I was going to say it wrong. I like, Turner... No, that's not it. Yeah, that always got me because it's like at quick glance, it's like okay, there's like an R, so it's Terminite, and I always mess yeah. it up. It's like there's the R and Terminite. Like, oh, I'm sorry. How was it jamming that track and having them share it? Oh my god, I was so shocked. Like, it was just for fun because like it's so interesting. Like some of the EDM stuff, like some of the lines they, they so, go so fast it's like trying to play on a guitar it's like almost as if I'm playing like metal music or something like that like learning all these different ways to play it and stuff and then I was like I post it and I was like oh this is for fun but I started realizing that a lot of people were sharing it it was like oh my god like for some reason it's what, just like viral, huh? it's just like it's just like blew people's lines and then the next thing I know it's like he shares on his wall I'm like holy shit I feel like a celebrity just shared a cover <laughs> It was so crazy. I, I never would have thought. Oh, that's that's freaking awesome right there. Um, where else? Do, where can people find you through social media or just in general? Uh, in general, I have uh, dbassett.com. I'm also on Squarespace's Desiree's uh, dash Bassett dot Squarespace dot com. I know it's kind of lengthy, but um. I'm also on Facebook. You can find me facebook.com slash Desiree Apollonio Bassett. And, um, yeah, I'm on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all those things. 
The whole nine yards. <laughs> the whole nine yards. All right. Well, I am going to end this interview for now. I'm going to let you go about your day. I know it's about 2 p.m. over there, correct? That's correct. All right. Well, it was great chatting with you, getting to talk to you, and thank you again for doing this interview. Thanks for having me, Nelson. It's nice to talk to you and to be a part of this. And thanks for agreeing to it, and we'd love to have you back on the show after the tour to talk about uh, your experience over in Australia. For sure. I'd love to. Enjoy your time over there and have fun. Be safe. Thank you. All right. All right, we're signing off here. Uh, if you missed any of this and you want to catch uh, the previous episodes, uh, log on to Spreaker.com forward slash users forward slash Metalhead Nelson. And make sure to check out and follow Desiree Bassett and see what she's doing and say what's up. <laughs> All right. And this is Metalhead Nelson signing off. Take care, bye, and have a great one. See ya.